So more and more console players are ditching the typical couch and family room TV gaming setup for something that looks a lot more like a PC gaming setup where the console sits on a desk and is plugged directly into a gaming monitor. And there's a few big reasons that this is happening. First, the days of sitting around a TV playing multiplayer with your friends while eating a junior bacon cheeseburger from Wendy's are a thing of the past because most multiplayer games today require users to be at their own screen. Second, the performance of today's consoles like the Xbox Series X or the Sony PlayStation 5 are now to the point where they can justify being paired with a PC gaming monitor. And odds are you're already at a desk for much of the day, whether you're doing homework or you work from home. And what feels better than going from getting roasted by your boss on Zoom and then immediately being able to switch over to some Call of Duty without having to move. So if you are the owner or a soon to be owner of the PS5, I'm gonna break your heart in just a second, but because I care about you, I'm gonna help you piece it all back together. So here's the good news. The PS5 can push out a 4K image at 120 frames per second. And for console gaming, that is a huge step forward. But here's the bad news. You likely aren't taking advantage of those specs. Less than half of American households have a 4K TV in their home. And the vast majority of TVs and homes, including those 4K TVs, cap the refresh rate at 60 Hertz. So put simply, you can kiss those 120 frames per second goodbye because the most you're ever gonna see is 60. If you wanna increase the performance of your PS5 gaming experience, here's how you can fix it. First, you can upgrade your TV. Not only do you want a 4K TV, but you want one that has a 120 Hertz refresh rate and that the HDMI ports are 2.1, not 2.0. Now, if you recently got a new 4K TV and you're curious if it supports HDMI 2.1, you can often tell by checking the actual HDMI ports on the back to see if they're labeled one way or the other. Often, if it's a 2.1 port, they'll label it, uh, but not always. So you may need to look up the product page of that TV and check out the specs. The other sign is to look at the stickers on the back of the TV. Often you'll see details like this sticker, which tells me this TV is a 60 Hertz TV. That's a surefire way to know that your TV definitely does not support HDMI 2.1. HDMI 2.1 is the only type of HDMI port available today that will let you simultaneously display both a 4K resolution and at 120 frames per second. Most TVs and gaming monitors still have HDMI 2.0 ports, which can pass through a 4K resolution. They can pass through more than 120 frames per second but not both at the same time. This is why the vast amount of PS5 players are left to pick between two options. Do you want your game to display at a beautiful 4K resolution, but you're only gonna get 60 frames per second? Or do you want that smooth 120 frames per second, but then you gotta play at 1080p? For slower paced games, you're probably gonna lean towards that 4K image. But if you're playing a fast paced game like Call of Duty, you're gonna likely want those 120 frames per second, even at the cost of lower resolution. Now, before you rush out and buy a TV, might I suggest you buy a gaming monitor instead? Yes, the screens are going to be much smaller than your 55 inch TV, but you're also gonna be sitting a lot closer to your gaming monitor, so the size evens out. But the biggest advantage of a gaming monitor is you get a lot more for a lot less. The thing to be wary of when buying a gaming monitor for a PS5 versus buying a gaming monitor for a PC is it's much easier to overspend for a PS5. Remember, unlike a gaming PC, the most frames per second that you will see from your PlayStation 5 is 120. So dropping a bunch of cash on that 360 Hertz monitor is a waste of money for a PS5. I often tell PC gamers, especially those buying their first gaming monitor, not to buy a 4K monitor. And I'll link to a video in the description that explains my reasoning on that. And this might sound crazy considering what we have just been talking about, but I kind of suggest the same for you. Now you might be saying, Brandon, the whole point of this was to show me how I can get that 120 frames per second at a beautiful 4K resolution. And you can, but just like with a TV, it's still not cheap to get both 4K and a high refresh rate at the same time. Also consider the fact that ultimately it's up to the creators of the game what resolution and frame rate it will output and most games, while they're growing in number, still don't do both. 
But if you are a person who at least wants the option of playing at a higher frame rate and you're currently gaming on a 60 hertz TV, a gaming monitor is the cheapest path to accomplishing that. This is a 27 inch monitor from Gigabyte and it supports a 1440p resolution at a 144 hertz refresh rate. And for PC gaming, a monitor with these kind of specs is a really nice sweet spot. And I would also say it's a solid purchase for your PS5, especially if you're gonna be using this monitor for other things like work. It's got multiple inputs on the back so you can have both your PC and your MacBook plugged in at the same time, and you can just easily toggle between both inputs. A monitor with these types of specs will typically be sold in that $250 to $300 price range. And before you rush out and buy a monitor, be sure to visit and bookmark the Tech Audit TV Deals website because every single day we're posting hand curated deals and very often they're monitor deals. So I'll link to that site in the description below. Now you could save money and get the same gaming quality by purchasing a 1080p monitor with at least 120 hertz refresh rate, but I'm seeing a lot of rumors that Sony will be pushing out an update probably this year, allowing users to select a 1440p resolution instead of having to pick between 1080p and 4K. And if you do play a game at 4K resolution, you're gonna get a better picture with a 1440p screen versus a 1080p screen. So ultimately it's a decision for you to make, but for me, it's easier to justify the higher resolution, especially if this monitor will double as your monitor for work and, and watching movies or video editing, watching YouTube videos. One last thing, and this is critical and easy to overlook, but if you are going to go for that HDMI 2.1 screen, it doesn't matter if it's a TV or a monitor, you need to make sure that everything in between your PS5 and the screen is HDMI 2.1 friendly. Now, despite what some headlines are suggesting, the cable that comes with your PS5 is capable of the 120 frames per second at 4K resolution. And that's been confirmed by cable geeks a lot smarter than me. For some stupid reason, cables aren't often labeled with their HDMI number and instead are using marketing terms. If your cable says high speed, then it's very likely an HDMI 2.0 cable. If it says ultra high speed, it's very likely an HDMI 2.1 cable. The PS5 cable actually says high speed instead of saying ultra high speed, which is what originally led a lot of people to say that it's not an HDMI 2.1 cable. With consoles becoming more PC-like in their performance, we're seeing more consoles graduate from sitting on the floor next to the TV to making their way to the desk setup, and I am all for that. And if you're new to gaming monitors, I've put together a masterclass on exactly how to buy one, and I've packed it all into a very easy to understand 11-minute video, which you can watch right here. Enjoy.